But today, this is the big one. This is the one that could decide the championship, to be fair. This is the this is the game that will probably, I feel like, decide who will be going up this season. Automatically, at least. Into the black hole. And welcome back to another episode of Sunshine on Lathe with Whitport Athletic. If you are enjoying the series, do drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. So, uh, firstly, I just want to apologize for the fact that there hasn't been any videos for the last few days. Essentially, I did explain this on Discord and I talked about it on stream on Tuesday. Um, but for the last couple of weeks, we've been quite run down and uh, mental health has been a bit all over the place for the last couple of weeks. And it all sort of just kind of came to a head on Monday and I just kind of needed to take some time. And I was also feeling unwell too, which did not help. And that was normally a day where I'd record three videos and unfortunately I was unable to get them done. I was feeling a little bit better on Tuesday, so I was able to stream. It's now Wednesday recording this and I'm starting to get a little bit of my mojo back, but these things just take a little bit of time. But the last thing I wanted was to have happen what happened a few years ago, where I just had to completely step away. So I thought taking a day there would make the most sense. We can get back to some lovely football manager. Also, since it's the start of the week, i.e. Friday in this case, uh, for you guys anyway, it's time to thank new patrons. And this week it is Scotty Ryan. So thank you so much for that, mate. That's incredible. And thank you to everyone else that's over on the Patreon as well. And just to everyone that's been watching the videos uh, for... God knows how long. It's been fantastic. Trying to tell players with low aggression to get stuck in probably turns them into the Hulk as they can't control it. True. I would know nothing about things like Hulk mode. That's just not something I have any experience with. After this, Unia on the latest streamer showdown, Matt has learned how to defend properly. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't say that. I would not say that. And certainly not in this save. Rumors are swirling around the island that Harry Hammett has started a new band and is calling them Wit Portalica. That is a... That is a, a mouthful. Inspired to do so by his cousin Kirk Hammett of Metallica. Oh, but of course, presumably Mega Stepanek will be forming on the other side of the island. BBK did something other than getting red cards. Mind blowing. I know. He's turned over a new leaf. Top 10 anime character arcs. But today, we're playing against the boys of Hereford. Um, if there was ever a time to play them, I feel like it's kind of a good time to play them now. We're playing good football and they're sort of struggling a little bit more in this league. We're in the best form I think we've been in in this save. If it wasn't for the fact that Stockport are just that much better than us at the moment. But a win against Hereford today, which let's face it, it would be about time we got one, would be very, very nice. We'd pull us to within a point of Stockport with us playing them later today in this episode. Big stuff, because I really do feel like it's a top two battle now. Everybody else is kind of out the way by some extent, but us and Stockport are in a massive battle. Uh, Hereford struggling really to even get near the playoffs now. Now, we are missing a few players, unfortunately. This entire left side, which is just fantastic. So with that news, um, unfortunately, it's going to have to be Alfie Williams and Harrison Webster that come in. Now, BPK should still be able to play, right? Yeah. That, that's probably for the best. Have my man come in and Simon Vincent on the bench. He's done well, though, to be fair, this season, Simon Vincent. He's done okay when he's been asked to. He's done better than Miles Bright. Front line will be Hammett and Mills, of course. Krasniski is good to have him around, but he's not a starter for me. There's every chance that this could just turn into yet another one of those games against Hereford. We owe them. There's barely been a game that we haven't owed Hereford. So a lot of the talk about BPK and his success in that role uh, was to do with his aggression and work rate. Now, his work rate isn't fantastic, but his aggression is. And I think that's the reason that... Uh, Declan Rice over on the left-hand side has also done well because he has decent aggression. Not as good, but quite good. But he also has good work rate. Williams is in here over the crossbar. Big chance there. Really good opportunity. Probably should have hit the target at least. But the suspicion is that that is the reason why. And that's something to look for in our wingers from now on. Work rate and aggression is what we really, really want in order to give us that defensive stability from the wide areas. And I think that's going to make a huge difference for us uh, over the coming seasons with the signings I choose to make. Because Miles Bright has lacked all of that kind of stuff. He's he's fine from a sort of attacking standpoint, but you need so much more out of him. Alfie Williams with a bit of room here. Ben Mills is a bit wide, but he might still get the shot away. He's through. Great save again and cleared away. We've started super well here. Both opportunities, early doors have gone to Whitport. This is big. I feel like we'd have really turned a corner if we can get a win against Hereford. That would be the ultimate corner turn. And Putman Kitely's into the box and he tries to find Ben Mills and he couldn't. Can't remember what, the, what how well we played in that draw. Uh, Kelly, on the side of Putman Kitely again. Bombing forward. Can he find a ball? Oh, look at that for a ball. Oh, Ben Putman Kitely. He's back, boys. He's back. Isted is a good goalkeeper. I, I find myself constantly saying and saved by Isted whenever we play them. Thorpe. Richards. Oh, Lord, that's a great ball through. Grid saved by O'Reilly as well. There's a lot of players whose contracts are up at the end of the season, and I'm not entirely sure about uh, extending them just yet because I want to wait and see what league we're going to be playing in. Honestly, if BPK just had better tackling, he would actually be probably far better at not getting sent off in these games. But, and one of the things I have considered is the idea of turning off, get stuck in, because it might just, my concern is that it would just allow us to, we'd lose more of the ball I worry about. That's my concern. But 
it might be that we're not actually oh for the love of god oh dear well, that's a good chance as well this has been a very even game actually it's so hard to tell what kind of effect it would have on us because someone made the point that maybe the fact that we've got it on means we're getting a lot of cards and fouls committed and red cards potentially but we're also not getting the benefit of it because the players in the squad aren't good enough to make a, take advantage of the get stuck in approach because they're tackling and a, certain areas aren't good enough so maybe that's what, something worth trying it's just a thought but if we could limit the number of fouls we're committing to a little bit less at least we'd give away less free kicks which means in theory less goals conceded now we might still concede the old one where they maybe would have slid in but gets into midfield Lau knocks it down but this is the area where we struggle when the ball gets into this area we got to do better than this and we cannot let mason pick the ball up there oh lordy lord triple sub being made because we're just not really doing much i mean i guess a draw is better than nothing and it would still give us a chance to go above stockport because of goal difference and whatnot but I don't know, they are our bogey team, no matter what we do. Uh, I think it's unlikely to happen, but you never know. It's a good clearance. Unless we get a goal in the next five seconds, it does look as though this is going to be yet another game against Hereford. Our sixth game against Hereford in this save without a victory against them. It's a weird old tie. That being said, I think this is the best performance we've put in against Hereford. And another clean sheet for Whitport, which is a good sign. Uh, only 18 goals conceded in 28 matches. I think that now makes us the best defence in the entire league uh, by a not a comfortable margin, but definitely the best. And a decent goal difference to go with it. It's not the end of the world. We, we stay right in the battle with Stockport. And a win against them in the next game would be massive. So a couple of games off camera. Not a lot. But back in a second for Stockport. This is huge. Right. So, we're back. We've had a couple of games off camera. First of which was a 1-0, a tricky little 1-0 away at Stallybridge Celtic. Um, This one... <sighs> We were definitely the better side, but we got a bit fortunate with the way Hammett was able to win the ball in the box and slot it home for the only goal of the game. But you'll notice only 10 fouls conceded, which is much, much better. Uh, we've turned off, get stuck in, and over the course of these last few matches, including the Hereford second half, we've conceded a lot less fouls. I'd say around about 40 to 50% less fouls, which means less yellow cards, less suspensions, less free kicks. And it also seems to be making us uh, get more fouls for ourselves too. But more importantly, Stockport dropped points against Gateshead, who were on the up and had some games in hand, didn't realise how good they actually were at the moment, which was fantastic, as we then came into the game against Telford United, who were third in the league, and thumped them 3-0. Ruben Lau's header in off the post. We had chances for days and defended so good in this match. And then another set piece not long after that, ball whipped in, this time by Walker Rice. There was Jake Watson at the back post. He's been a revelation at centre-back this season. And then finally, we got one more not long afterwards, as Walker Rice won the ball off a bad clearance. He managed to drive towards the box himself. I didn't expect him to score, um, but he nearly did. Good save from the keeper. The defenders don't clear it and there is Harry Hammett to make it 3-0 but you can see once again only 11 fouls so against Hereford we had 12 we had 10 against Stallybridge and 11 against Telford we've averaged anywhere between 16 and 26 fouls in all the other matches this season so it's definitely a nice drop down and I think that's going to make a huge difference just the two bookings in this match admittedly one of them was to Putman Kitely but that's how it goes also weird little bit of trivia for you Jeff Robinson Symes was playing for Stallybridge Celtic he was at Blackhaven the first couple of seasons, sold him to Burton, and now he's been released and gone on to Stellybridge Celtic on a free transfer. So his career did not work out that well off the island. So yeah, he was back. Well, not technically back because we were playing a Stellybridge, but it's weird to see one of those players playing against us back in this division. And the best news of all is that Stockport, with those two draws, they got a late goal scored against them by Kingsland Town, allows us to actually leapfrog them before the game today, which was quite surprising. I thought we were going to come into this a point behind them because that's what we've got back. But I didn't see that Kings Lynn had scored a late equaliser against them at home. So it is getting very, very tight indeed. Uh, still the best defence in the league. We've only conceded 18 goals in 30 matches, which is actually ridiculous. Our defence has really stepped up this season, which is the main difference between this season and last year. We're scoring a bit less, but my goodness, have we got the defence of dreams. And I think, like people say, a clean sheet is often worth like two points. And we've got a lot of them lately. Four in our last five. And somehow, despite all that, our goalkeeper's still not even in the top three in clean sheets. Because reasons. But nobody's really in spectacular form. Us and Stockport are still outforming the rest of the league, although York have got some quality in them as well. It looks pretty damn solid. But today, this is the big one. This is the one that could decide the championship, to be fair. This is the this is the game that will probably, I feel like, decide who will be going up this season. Automatically, at least. Now, we've got a very average record against Stockport. We've had a couple of draws. They have an average record against us too. We've both got a win and a couple of draws in there. We've got a few players ineligible, but those are just like lone uh, trial players. Jim Gannon's still there. So, Pop McCartley is, of course, suspended, which is a shame. And unfortunately, we're lacking fitness in some of our players, but we really don't have much of a choice at the moment. We just need to get through one more game uh, in this Christmas period. It's a toughie for us. It's also just occurred to me that it's the 31st of January, and the Christmas period has long gone, which means we should be back to normal fixtures soon. But I will not be starting Pop McCartley. The reason I'm going to start Simon Vincent is... 14 aggression, 14 work rate. That's what we're really interested in. When you compare that to Miles Bright, 5 aggression, 11 work rate. It's that really bad aggression that's causing the problems. If you want an example of that, this is our wide players at the squad. Most of them, anyway. So, tackles one per game. Putman Kitely with the most. Walker Rice, not far behind. Vincent's not too bad either. Alfie Williams is a lot further off, but still doable. All the way down here is Miles Bright. This is not good. 
th this is this is a problem, Miles. So I don't see us getting out of this with a clean sheet or anything. Stockport are a decent team, as will we know. I mean, look at the form they've been in. They got dropped, but then they've just been on a steady climb since then. And they've got Jong Young, who doesn't appear to be start. Oh, yes. No, yes, he is. He's playing on the left-hand side, though. So we might just press him anyway, because he's going to be their main goal threat. Because they've been really good lately, but they have just started to stumble. Now, Gateshead was a tough one, because it was away from home, and they're in, they're in decent form and had some games in hand. But the Kings Lynn Town one, hmm, that's a bit suspect. I'm concerned about our back line, though. So the only change I've made is turned off, get stuck in. And, well, you saw the difference. We've had 12 fouls, 10 fouls, and 11 fouls. So I expect this to be around about that sort of same area today, which is good, which would hopefully prevent us from getting unnecessary red cards and whatnot. Walker Rice, although we are going to be lacking Putman Kitely. Hammett could get beyond here. He has. Hammett's through. Oh, what a great little block there. But already inside 30 seconds, Harry Hammett is shaking things up here. A win against Stockport at Edgeley Park could really do it for us because then we'd be four points above them. And that then would be quite a tough one for them to claw back. Something else I've been looking at messing around with a little bit is the, oh, hello, uh, is the tempo slightly. Now, we changed around with stuff like that in the streamer showdown. I've had some quite good success. So one thing I've noticed um, in games is that sometimes in certain periods, particularly late on, we can up our tempo slightly. And it does seem to create a little bit more movement around the squad. And it's good in games that we're not quite winning late on, but we don't want to adjust the... Uh, mentality and stuff like that just to change in the tempo slightly can work and john young at the far post stop port score their first shot on target and well it's only 15 minutes gone but we've not managed to score ours and now they lead and could go back to two points clear at the top poor really um john young this is the problem he's their danger man usually plays at striker they've obviously sussed something out and have paired him up against jake kelly at the back post and he just has so much. i mean to be fair he didn't need the height over jake kelly there he could have just walked in by himself another big tackle and Ke what a save from o'reilly we have suddenly just sort of lost it a little bit here. We've had a lot of lucky results against Stockport, I would say, in this save. And oh, God. Oh, what a save, my Riley. And it does kind of feel like they're coming home to roost a little bit today. Not because we're unlucky, just because they're playing really well. It really does seem like the lack of Putman Kitely is just killing us right now. We've been very, very poor. And eight fouls as well is quite a lot. So I am actually going to try and just push the tempo a tiny little bit for this second half and just see if that can make us play a little bit better. Because I... I I, hand, I always seem to find a new thing to try and tinker with, and that seems to be my latest uh, obsession. So we'll see if it works. But uh, as long as we don't lose too badly, I guess. No, I'm already preparing for a loss. Let's try and grab ourselves a cheeky equaliser. We've got it in us. I can feel it. This feels like we're just going to grind our way towards a poor result unless I make some changes, but I just don't know what to make. And Brown Richardson, another big save. Could have tried to distribute to the flanks. Oh, Kasimba's ball in. Ah, oh, dear. Because they have got a lot of players pushed forward, and one of our wingers are probably quite good in the air. Richardson Brown, don't let him get the ball across. It's John Young again. He is so lethal at this level. Good block. Because Stockport are running us ragged right now. Hunter. Edge of the box for Kearney. It's a long-range strike and it's tipped over again. I think the plan is going to be stay in this for as long as we can and then try and spring something on them in the last 10, 15 minutes. Lagool, Please don't foul him. That's it. Well played. Nope. Lau clears it. But again, they're just coming straight back at us. Over and over. This highlight has been going for what feels like an eternity and we just cannot win the ball off of them. Every single tackle is being missed at the moment. This is going to end up with something big. I can feel it. Look at this play from Stockport. My God, they're running us all over the shop. Hunter, blocked, and it's out for a throw-in in the end. Looking long again for Mottram. That's better. Oh, no, it's not. Even that's gone to Elliot Kebby. Win that. Nope. Young wins that as well. Brown Richardson, another save for O'Reilly. We have emphatically not shown up in this match. Haven't had a single shot of any form in the second half uh, to give you an idea of where we've been at here. Still only going to lose 1-0, though, which is amazing. Unless... Walker Rice gets us a corner. Okay, maybe there is one last little chance. Stockport deserved the victory here by miles, but can we pull out yet another massively lucky goal? We have Ruben Lau with the flick on header, and it is one all at Edgeley Park, and we may well just have got ourselves top again. All right, hang on. Get that time wasting on. Play for some set pieces, and well, Charlie Winfield, of all people, taking the ball in, and Ruben Lau, completely unmarked, just peels away and makes his only his third goal of the year, but he may well have just given us a crucial equaliser at Edgeley Park. That is a goal we did not expect. Stockport have changed it, and we've immediately conceded a free kick, which we'll probably concede from. What a save from O'Reilly. My goodness, we needed that. A lot of fouls from us today. Uh, we've had to be more aggressive with them, I think, as the game's worn on. But that could be the exception rather than the rule ball. And again, what Walker Rice will clear. Three minutes to go. The AI set pieces thing with the unmarked players is really annoying, but we do look as though we've probably just about got away with it here at Edgeley Park, unless he scores one now, blocked away, and that will surely do it. 94th minute on the clock. Are we going to get away with an absolutely mugging of a point here at Edgeley Park for what seems like the fifth time in a row? Clattered out of play, and that will surely do it for us. Still play. Yes! Stickport 1, Wick, Wickport? Whitport Athletic 1. Our 19th goal of the season is conceded, but Ruben Lau has bailed us out massively. Completely undeserved point, but we will absolutely take it. That could be the point that could potentially get us promoted. Now we just have to match their record for the remaining 11 matches, and we will be promoted to the National League. But still a lot of work to be done. 
York City is starting to build a bit of a head of steam up as well. So Stockport got to start looking behind them too because they've got a decent goal difference as well. That was a very solid result. And look at the amount of games that we've actually only lost one league match since September. That's a pretty good result, really. So next episode is obviously going to start off with Gateshead, which is a massive game in the Builder Base Trophy because we need that cash. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll do Darlington. That way we can set ourselves up for a potential four-game live comic extravaganza towards the end of the season. Because let's face it, we're not going to be able to pull away in this league unless Stockport get a really bad run of form. So that is going to be a crazy difficult run in as well. Actually, is it though? Farsley, Gateshead are tough, Kings Lynn and Newport Pagel. So actually three out of those last four matches are super winnable. But this is us, remember? So you never know. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like on the video. That'd be superb. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and sometimes at the weekend, so go follow there too. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun, Capybara. Bye-bye.